Benedict Arnold uh, is the great American trader. I mean, he was an American hero. He may have been the best fighting general we had. Uh, I mean, leading troops into battle, you want no one other than Benedict Arnold. And even after he went over to the British, he led raids on New Haven, and he led a raid up the James River in Virginia, which are far better than anything any other British officer did at the time. I mean, he was a fighter, but he also wanted, uh, he decided that he wanted to get, be wealthy. And he got into the upper, he was commander. After the British evacuated Philadelphia, he took, he was the garrison commander, if you will. He was recovering from a, a bad wound that left him, his one leg was significantly shorter than the other, and he'd been wounded twice in the same leg. As a matter of fact, there's a monument on the battle of, uh, on where Saratoga is. He led the, the fight there, and it's a leg. And because that's the, the when they, built the monument, they said they wanted to honor, honor Arnold and his fighting abilities, but that's the only part of him that was worthy of being honored, uh, because uh, that's what he had lost, essentially, in American service. Anyway, when he was in Philadelphia, he hooked up, uh, or, or got engaged to, and then married, a woman who was the daughter of not, not an out-and-out -out loyalist, but was sympathetic to the British cause. Her name was Peggy Shippen. And she had actually dated Jean Andre, if, well, dated in, a, in the 18th century sense. I mean, Arnold, I'm sorry, Andre was most impressed with her, and she seems to have flirted with him. Uh, anyway, when Arnold uh, was taking over in, uh, in Philadelphia, he decided that he needed more money to really survive uh, in the war and post-war, particularly post-war, and that he was not getting promoted, he was not getting the kinds of monies from the Americans that would make it worth his while. So Peggy Shippen Arnold opened a correspondence with John Andre. Andre was an aide to Henry Clinton, and he ran Clinton's supply, or su su excuse me, his spies, uh, his intelligence operations. So Arnold let it be known that he would be willing to turn over the fortress at West Point, which was the key to control of the Hudson, to the British if they would make him a general, give him an amount of money. And he even sweetened the pot by saying, you know, <laughs> Washington's coming up here. I could maybe give you him too. So Arnold lobbied for and received command of the fortress at West Point. Like I said, it was the keystone of American defenses. <clears throat> and if you had taken West Point, you would have cut New England off from the rest of the country. Uh, Washington felt so beholden to Arnold because of his past service that he gave him, even though he was mystified why Arnold would want you know, a backwater command like that, um, the fighting general would want to be there. So he, he gave him the command, and Arnold arranged uh, this uh, traitor, I mean, this treason, excuse me. And Andre came up to finalize the deal. He came up, and then uh, because Arnold was in command, he said, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no threat or there's no uh, chance that you'll be caught because I, I can do things. And so what they did is they brought a small British warship up the river, and Arnold was supposed to, I'm sorry, Andre was supposed to negotiate with Arnold and then be transported back to that British warship. Well, what happened is <laughs> a zealous American artillery officer put a cannon right there and started banging away at the British warship. So they decided it was too hot to remain, so they moved down the river, which meant Andre had to go much farther to get back to British lines. So Arnold convinces him to change out of his uniform and change into the garb of an everyday merchant and to carry the agreement in his shoe, uh, uh, to secret it there. And uh, so he starts moving out under the guy, or guy, or under the, with the help of, excuse me, a man that Arnold has arranged, uh, another quasi-loyalist, if you will, although he's never punished for his role, so he gets away with it. Um, but he gets Andre 
to what he considers the edge of the American lines. But there are a couple of American outscouts, or that's being kind, you can consider them to be partisans, or you consider them to be highway robbers. robbers. They were sitting there, and they were stopping people that were coming through and probably extorting. Andre thought that he had encountered loyalist militiamen, who were called cowboys, interestingly enough, and he divulged that he was a British officer. And they got suspicious. He tried to buy them off. They wouldn't buy it, be bought off. And so Andre was captured. Now, he was taking, uh, taken uh, to an American uh, outpost, but the officer, interestingly enough, sent word to Arnold that Andre had been captured. So Arnold was able to escape. And, uh, and then Peggy Ship and Arnold, he left her behind. Uh, and when Washington and his uh, entourage arrived at West Point, Peggy went into hysterics saying that, uh, you know, don't you kill my baby, don't kill my baby. Probably it was an act, but it was very effective. And she also was in a semi-state of undress, which also got the attention of the aides, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, she was able to convince Washington that she was innocent, and he sent her into New York City to be with uh, Benedict Arnold. But the way that Arnold was captured was so fortuitous, if you will, that the Americans became convinced that God had actively intervened on their side, that this should not have happened, that Arnold should have turned it over to the British, that the British could have captured Washington, and that really, you know, the fact that these three outriders were there, that, Ar that Andre had thought that they were loyalists, that he had divulged the whole thing, that, that it had come apart, such a well-planned, uh, act of treason had come apart, that they decided that, the, uh, that God was truly on their side. So in, in a sense, it revitalized the revolution in a time that there had not been good news for, like a, for a long time. It was one defeat or one uh, disappointment after another. And this was a significant boost, if you will. And it kind of it created uh, a, a momentum, at least in the North, that went forward. Uh, not so much in the South, but certainly in the North. It created a momentum that I think uh, helped finish out the revolution, if you will.